Consider ourselves to worship God. Let us worship God and please join in our call to worship. Watch and be ready. For you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Let us pray. O great and loving God, your wisdom is radiant and unfading and easily discerned by all who seek your way. When faithful men and women live in love and work for justice, heaven breaks into earth. Give us the grace to live confidently and expectantly, trusting that the Lord of history, who has been approaching from all eternity, comes into life continually with compassion, redemption, and hope. Amen. Please join in our song of praise, Judge Eternal, Throned in Splendor. May the peace of our Lord be with you all. And also with you. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. 
and the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters <clears throat> and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Please join in our responsive reading from Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire to hurt me. Let those who say, aha, aha, turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. But I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. Let us pray. God, our help and deliverer, do not abandon us among the many temptations of life, but deliver us from evil and turn our tears and struggles into joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus says, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of, our, of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you neither know the day nor the hour. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. <clears throat> May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Part of the telling of this parable by Jesus unique to Matthew was Matthew's concern to deal with a struggle and question within the community of faith of, of Matthew's time is when is Jesus coming back? He kept telling us stories and accounts that he would be coming back, that God would be with us. And the people had seen persecution of their community by the Roman authorities. They had seen the temple by, destroyed by Rome. They had seen conflict and confusion with their own community as those who were raised in Judaism remained with their tradition and Gentiles were becoming Christians and it was difficult. Now, when is Jesus coming back? And part of Matthew's concern is to reassure and reaffirm that Jesus' promise is true and consistent, but to put out to the community that we neither know the day or the hour, and the community is to stay vigilant, to stay awake. 
But to get to that conflict and the, the struggle the community was had, had was the story of 10 bridesmaids and the custom and pattern of the wedding of, of the Jewish community in the first century is that the bride would assign 10 women to be bridesmaids who would go to the groom's house and escort the groom to the bride's home. So the 10 bridesmaids are there and five have their lamp and extra batteries and others have their lamp and no batteries and they have their batteries on waiting for the they have the light on waiting for the bridegroom and you know there could have been a conversation you know girls that's Jack down the road Jack's never on time he's gonna be late so you know have extra batteries and they didn't oh we forgot you know oh well it'll be okay or maybe Jack got involved with Donna's father about the dowry and said, well, you said, you know, it was okay for the car, but now you want the house. Well, maybe we, so maybe there was a delay in the negotiation, but the women should have expected that too. So they all fall asleep. Then the bridegroom comes and the women with the extra oil good to go and the women who don't make the decision that they better go get more oil and they'll play catch up but they're late and the door shut and what a harsh response I did not know you ouch just because we forgot our batteries? What could, you know, I guess they had a choice. Well, you know, we, we'll walk with you anyway and we'll live in your light because our, our flashlights are out, but we'll go with you anyway. Could have done that. This has been part of the party. But Jesus says, or the Lord in the parable says, keep awake therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Now this is, a, this is troublesome. Because even throughout these 2,000 years of Jesus and church people and the Bible and history, there have been groups within this large conversation who read the Bible and look at their historical situation and their own anxiety and patterns and try to come up with a relationship between the stories of the Bible and the history of the world and begin to say, you know, this is the time Jesus is coming back and you better be ready and you know what happens when God comes back or when Jesus comes back. You know what's going to happen to you if you're not with Jesus. And we see billboards saying he's coming. You better watch out. You better not pout. Better not cry. I'm telling you why. Judge is coming. Better get on the right side. Better get on the train. Or else. And they even try to look at the history of the world, especially in the Middle East, and have these grandiose plans that, you know, when Israel gets unified and the Palestinians are all out of there and, and there's going to be a great war and then Jesus is coming back. And let's help that process in our political arrangements of the world and we'll help make that time come sooner. But you know neither the day nor the hour. 
so you're not going to make it come faster or slower with the games people play. But they play them anyway. And it may not hasten the time Jesus comes back, but it might hasten a little more conflict in the world. But isn't that the point? The conflict of the world is seen as God's judgment. Yeah. God's going to come to judge the world. And like Amos says, alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Y'all think it's going to be good for you because you're on the train, the Jesus train. And when God comes back, it's going to be good. Good for us, but bad for you also. Get on the train. And Amos is saying, "Mm -mm. no, 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 no. Don't jump there so fast on that track. You want the day of the Lord? It's darkness. A lion's coming. If you try to escape from the lion, you'll be caught by a bear. Go into a house, you'll be bit by a snake. The day of the Lord is darkness. And in fact, there's a a flipping of those who are saying, well, we, we worship. We have parties and celebrations in your name and honor, and the response of the Lord in God's judgment is, I hate your festivals. I'm so sick and tired of your music. I'm, I'm done. Here's what the music I want to see. Here's the sounds I want to hear. I want to hear justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. That's the music to my ears. Let me hear that, people. That's the day of the Lord. So how does God come in, in judgment? What is it like when here comes the judge? We already know. The one who's telling this parable in a couple of days from the telling of this story will be framed, set up, tried, convicted, executed, and left to die. The day of the Lord. We might look at it as Good Friday, the day of the Lord. God's judgment is the one who in Jesus is judged by the world. Okay, world, this is how you are. This is who you are. This is what you do. You show who you are in nailing Jesus to the cross. Okay. Here's my judgment on you. Jesus is raised. Now, Jesus is raised. Does Jesus call all the holy angels together and say, Gabriel, Michael, let's go get him. Let's, let's get this, let's wipe this scene out. Let's restore it. Is that the judgment of God? Judgment of God is to raise Jesus from the dead, and Jesus turns around and says, I pour out my Holy Spirit. I breathe my peace. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's the judgment of God upon us and upon our world. So for those who are waiting for Jesus to come back and wipe it all out, we already have Jesus coming back or being raised from the dead. And that's St. Jesus' game plan. 
He pours out his spirit upon 12 of his friends who joined him in a journey and one betrays him and they keep moving on and the church keeps moving on and they're all waiting to get to that banquet with the bridegroom when we don't know the day or the hour but we have this table now and they have each other now to recall and remember God's already judged us. And he's judged us because we put Jesus on the cross as a collective human activity and endeavor. But God says, your power to destroy cannot over my power to create life. And now that in Jesus you see that death has no power over the power of the creator, live as people of the creator. Live as people who know that God has judged the world and us and said, I love you, I forgive you, there's still a party coming, be part of the party people now. And how do you do that? You watch. You keep your lamp trimmed and burned and you continue to pray and struggle and work for what? To hear the music of that stream. to be part of that stream where justice and righteousness flow like ever-flowing ever streams. Keep awake in the struggle of the world, knowing that those forces that were against Jesus are continuing to be against that vision of the kingdom of God, but as God's people watch, they all fall asleep, they, he said, but we can't stay awake and watch because you don't know the hour or the day of the coming of the Lord. So, yeah, yeah well, it's been 2,000 years Maybe tomorrow, maybe not. We'll just kind of like chill. And Matthew's saying, don't chill. Stay awake. Know the music God's listening for. And be a part of that movement of God's people and the Spirit. In the waters of baptism. Restoring the deserts giving life to creation, to feed the hungry, help the animals, and restore the glory of the gift of God. All the bridesmaids fell asleep. They got blamed for not having oil. But in the end, Jesus says, stay awake. And as we clo draw closer and closer to the time of Advent, when we hear the story of the promise of the coming of Jesus, and we move toward that time in the life of the church where we said, you know, Jesus is, is going to come again throughout the whole journey of the year, the call is to, to stay awake. Stay awake. Don't chill out. Don't give up. Stay awake. Let us pray. <clears throat> Good and gracious one, we may be like the bridesmaids, foolish or not, but the call to stay awake is something that goes out to all. 
So by your spirit, help us to encourage one another to accept the delays in life, but to know that your promise to be with us does not fade away. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Our song of response is Jesus, Savior, Lord, to thee I fly. Please join in the prayers of the people. Our shepherd satisfies our needs. In faith, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, our God, we pray for the church. Open our lips to speak of your mighty acts and make us messengers of good news, teaching your truth to coming generations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, we pray for the earth. Make us better stewards of the gifts you give, conserving those resources and using them wisely while we await the glory of your new creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, we pray for all nations. Let all of us put away our false idols, wealth and status, weapons of war. Let us choose instead the wisdom of your way. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. O oh Lord our God, we pray for this community, for the nation as it goes through its transition of power. Send us quickly to send us quickly to help those who are in need, to defend those who are dishonored or despised, and to protect those whose lives are in danger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord our God, we pray for loved ones. For Rumi Campbell, who was hospitalized, for John's sister and daughter's mother. Give hope to those who worry or grieve, a hope that is firmly established in Christ and in the power of his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, our prayer. Loving shepherd, lead and guide us in green pastures and by still waters, in ripe paths and through dark valleys, until we feast with you in glory and dwell in your house forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us remember the words of Jesus who said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. 
We place your donation on the plate, in the t on the table in the front of the back. Uh, send your offering to your financial secretary, and the council is exploring a way to set up a website and credit card payment, so stay tuned. We're making it easier for you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we remember the gifts that you have given to us and to our world in gratitude. Use the gifts of our lives that we may be part of the music of streams and rivers which mount up and spill over into the blessings of righteousness and justice for the community and for the world. With thanksgiving, we offer ourselves to you, praying as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our ascending hymn is Keep Your Lamps Trimmed and Burning. The uh, weekend was a time of delay for many people in the country. <laughs> we, we didn't know whether it was going to be could be still going on, so we're delayed. <laughs> and, and you just keep your lamp trimmed and burning and watch because you don't know the day or the time. And may the Lamb be upon the throne be your shepherd, guiding you to the water of life and wiping away every tear. Hallelujah. Now press on toward the goal of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.